Good evening. Welcome to the holiday edition of Committee of Adjustment, our last meeting of the year. Tonight's Committee of Adjustment hearing is being held via video conference and live stream video on the town's live stream website at oakville.ca. This is a hearing to consider applications for minor variance and consents held under the authority of the Planning Act. Please keep in mind the intent of this process is to review the application that is before the committee, listen to the evidence, and then make a decision. This process is not intended to be used to resolve any concerns or disputes that may exist between the town, individuals, or organizations. If a request for a deferral is made and the committee grants such a request, the applicant or authorized agent must contact the secretary treasurer to schedule a new hearing date. In order to conduct an effective and efficient electronic hearing, we have adopted the following process. If you're watching the live stream of this hearing on oakville.ca, and if you wish to speak to an item on the agenda, you can call 905-815-6095. Again, 905-815-6095. Phone number is also posted on your screen below the live stream at oakville.ca. Staff will be standing by to take your call. When you call in, staff will ask your name, item number you wish to address, and your telephone number. Further instructions will be provided for you to call back to join the video conference. When the chair of the committee polls for interested parties, press star six to unmute yourself. <clears throat> the applicant or agent will be given the opportunity to briefly explain to the committee the basis of the application and answer any questions that may arise. Maximum of five minutes will be provided for a presentation. You'll need to state your full name and address for the record. Any submissions beyond five minutes will be at the discretion of the committee. All delegations must also state their full name and address for the record. Maximum of five minutes will also be provided to make your presentation. All remarks and questions are to be directed to the chair. Any submissions beyond five minutes will again be at the discretion of the committee. The applicant or agent will then be provided with a further five minutes to respond to the comments made by any interested parties and answer any questions from the committee members. If the applicant or agent has any concerns have found in the staff report, particularly with any proposed conditions, this is your opportunity to advise us. The matter will then be taken into committee for a decision. This will mark the end of all discussion. Any person desiring a notice of decision for an application must provide a written request, preferably through email to the secretary treasurer. Written notice of the committee's decision will be mailed not later than 10 days for my variance and 15 days for consents. This will go to the applicant and or agent and any other person who filed a written request for such notice. The last day to appeal the decision to the Ontario Land Tribunal will be noted on the decision. Only the applicant, specified persons or public bodies may appeal the committee's decision to, to the Ontario Land Tribunal. In November 22, Bill 23, the More Homes Built Faster Act amended the Planning Act to remove appeal rights for members of the public. If no appeal is received within the prescribed time frame, the decision of the committee becomes final and binding. The Secretary Treasurer will then notify the applicant and anyone who received a copy of the decision through written correspondence. People participating in the hearing are to be courteous to and respectful of the members of the committee, town staff, and the other people participating in the electronic hearing. Tonight's electronic hearing is being video recorded and available for future viewing at oakville.ca. Thank you. Madam Secretary, have we found <clears throat> Mr. Dickey yet? Um, no, we haven't. I haven't heard. So we, we would, if you want to move along with the meeting, um, if he shows up, then um, I can let you know. Okay, thank you. So we'll note regrets tonight from Ms. McHale and at this time, Mr. Dickey. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? I see none. Madam Secretary Treasurer, do we have any requests for deferral or withdrawals tonight? 
Okay, I'll just move them in the meeting. They've just raised their hand. I've moved uh, Clinton Archer into the meeting. Good evening, Mr. Archer. Thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is <clears throat> Clinton Archer. I am the authorized agent for 59 Sewell Drive. And um, <clears throat> Uh, basically, after reading the comments uh, provided by town staff, it was determined that uh, overall staff is not in support of our application. And it was also noted that a neighbor is also not in support. Um, because of this, we are requesting that our application be deferred until the next available committee of adjustment meeting date. Uh, this will give us enough time to revisit the design in order to mitigate any potential effects uh, negative effects outlined by staff and neighbor. Um, our goal is to work with the town and the neighborhood um, any way we can to lessen the severity of our request variances. And uh, we hope the committee members will be understanding of this situation and allow our application to be deferred. And uh, thank you in advance for your consideration. Yeah, thank you. We always encourage the applicants to meet with the town and residents. So we appreciate you requesting a deferral. Committee members, all those in favor of deferral? That is unanimous. Your application has been deferred. You can see the secretary treasurer when you're ready to be rescheduled. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you. Um, Secretary Treasurer, any further requests for deferral? Yes, I'm moving William Outred into the meeting. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Outred. Yes, good evening, good evening Mr. Chair. Uh, we're the agents for uh, application A. 174 uh, 2023 at 84 Ridge Drive. Uh, like the previous uh, uh, applicants, um, we've uh, seen the planning comments and uh, we'd like an opportunity to defer the application uh, to do some modifications of the design and uh, reach back to planning and then uh, we'll be back to the committee in the new year. Um, our variances are our variance is very minor, but uh, we're willing to work with planning and uh, see if we can uh, improve the, uh, the facade and the design. Thank you. Any members? All those in favor of the deferral? That is deferred. Looks like you've got the neighborhood on side. You need to work with staff. Yep, we do. Thank Thanks you. very much. Have a good evening. Um, Secretary Treasurer, any further requests? Um, I don't see any at this time, and Mr. Dickey has joined the meeting. Excellent. Good evening, Mr. Dickey. Actually, it looks like he's not, he was there, now he's not there, so I guess we'll just move ahead without him. <laughs> okay, we'll let him join in on the second application if he comes back. I certainly will. We will then start with CAV A-166-2023 at 1555 Nisha Drive. Okay, I've moved... Uh... Emily Via into the meeting. Good evening, Ms. Via. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. My name is Emily Via, and I'm here for, uh, from the Office of John Woman Architect, and I'm here to represent Mr. John Ross and Ms. Lauren Willoughby. Uh, if we could start with the first page. Yes, thank you very much. 
Uh, the proposed dwelling is situated within the required setbacks, and it's to ensure that adequate separation between dwellings uh, and also to respect the spatial character of the neighborhood. The two-story dwelling is approximately 3,900 square feet, and it's comprised of an attached double-car garage, a front covered porch, and a rear covered porch. The height of the new dwelling is within the maximum permitted, with a roof line that extends down to the ground floor eaves. And it's punctuated by gable dormers at the front and a shed at the rear, a shed dormer and a one-story attached rear structure. And that's to reduce the massing and to keep it appropriate with the adjacent properties. The proposal is fixed, uh, featured with a mix of stone and horizontal siding and a mix of asphalt and metal roofing and their measures to reduce, again, the potential impacts. We are seeking three minor variances. Uh, the first one is a garage floor area of 46.05 uh, meters square, whereas the maximum allowed is 45 uh, meters square. And the second uh, variance is a garage projection of 1.93 meters from the face of the longest portion of the main wall to the uh, garage uh, face. And the maximum allowed is 1.5 meters. And the third um, variance that we are seeking is a lot coverage of 28.3%, whereas the maximum is 25%. Um, if I could address the first one, if we're looking at the rendering right now, um, the garage floor area is an internal one, and therefore it's not apparent from the street. And as you can see, there are two car, and it's consistent with what's found in the neighborhood. And as for the garage projection, if we could go to page two, please, and that's the site plan. Okay, and um, what you see here, I've highlighted it in orange, and that's the 1.93 meters projection, and that's from the front face of the main wall to the front face of the garage. But in reality, the design is such that the uh, covered porch it projects, projects further from the garage wall, and therefore there's no impact. Um, and the third one is the uh, lot coverage. And so the design has various roof lines and dormers and hipped and gable roofs and a mix of materials. And this helped to break up the massing and uh, reduce its impact on its surroundings. Uh, if we could scroll through the um, other pages, page three, showing the front and the rear elevation uh, and to page four, please. And the shows the east and the west elevation. And if we could stop at page five, which is the map. Um, our clients canvassed the neighborhood and they came back with three who supported uh, the proposed dwelling. As you can see, the three um, dots, the green dots, they are directly to the east of the proposed development and there's one directly to the front. And the other one that you see there, the green circle, that's on um, the address is 1559. And um, the clients and I had separate discussions with the homeowner. His name is Mr. Frederick Hayward. And he had some concerns with the grading and the privacy at the rear. And we were able to address them with his, to his satisfaction. And if we could scroll to the last pages, page six, seven, and eight, those are the uh, signed um, support forms. And lastly, planning had no objection to the minor variances, and uh, we agree with the report that the proposal meets the four tests, which is the uh, meeting the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw, the an official plan, uh, the proposal is appropriate and desirable, and the variances are minor in nature and will have no negative impacts on the abutting properties. So this concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Okay, thank you. Just give the number again. If anybody wishes to speak to this application, please call 905-815-6095. Uh, further to the letters on the screen, we'll just read in for the record. Letters of support from John and Karina Sharp, John Jennifer McKenzie, and mm -hmm. Russ Armstrong. Committee members, do you have any questions for the applicant? I see none. 
Madam Secretary Treasurer, is anybody called in to speak to this application? There's no one at this time. Thank you. Then we'll close the discussion and I'll look for a motion. Mr. Hardcastle. We can't hear you. You're not shown as muted, but we're not hearing anything. Mr. Chairman, trying this again? There you go. Loud Thank and clear. Transitioning from teams, my apologies. Um, uh, having undertaken my site visit, Having reviewed the materials, including the written staff report and having heard the presentation of the applicant, I'm satisfied that the requested variance is conformed to the four tests and therefore I'll put forward a motion of approval. Um, that motion should be subject to two conditions, those being that the dwelling uh, be constructed in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings dated November 7th, 2023, and that the approval will expire within two years of the date of the decision if a permit has not been issued. Thank you. Is you any comments on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve? That is unanimous. Your application has been approved. All right. Thank you very much. Happy holidays. Same to you. Next application, CAVA 167 at 396 Winston Road. Okay, I'm promoting Tom Kolbasenko into the meeting. Good evening, Mr. Kolbasenko. Showing you as being muted. There we go. My apologies for that. Uh, good evening. This is Tom Kolbasenko from Our Cool Blue Architects. I'm here representing Mr. Moheb Shared, and he's a property owner for 396 Winston Road, Oakville. Uh, this application is for two minor variances to an existing uh, single family home. Um, if you want to scroll to the next page, please. Uh, the first variance is relating to an existing uh, non-conforming side yard. Um, the bylaw states it needs to be 1.2. The existing condition as surveyed is 1.13 meters. And normally this wouldn't require a variance to grandfather. However, we are extending the wall higher than the present condition. So we were advised that we need to make this uh, a variance request. And the second variance uh, relates to lot coverage. Uh, the lot coverage of the property as per as of right is 25%. Our client uh, wishes to add a, uh, a large front covered porch, as well as a rear, uh, rear house, rear of the house uh, covered porch, uh, both of them single story elements. And if you want to, if you could scroll to the next page, I'll illustrate that on the site plan. This is uh, the existing dwelling in question. Uh, um, the, the proposed design respects the character of the existing house and simply extends the, the existing character of the home to the second floor and to the rear addition. Next page, please. Um, so variance one is the side yard condition, which as I mentioned is existing and we're not changing it. And the variance two is for the front and rear single story covered porches. Um, we understand that these uh, elements are favorably viewed under the design guidelines for stable residential communities. And uh, we've received no objection from uh, town staff or from any neighbors. Uh, there's been no comments, no, no complaints, no objections. Next slide, please. Um, this drawing just illustrates the uh, scale and the uh, porches in context to the first floor floor plan. Next uh, page, please. And then the rest of them are just floor plans for reference in case there's any questions and elevations. We can skip uh, through the elevations as well. 
on the next page, please. So this is the, the front elevation, which uh, again continues the same character of the house with wood siding and with the stonework on the first level and siding on the second floor. At the rear, it's a um, pitched roof design um, with a exterior covered porch and siding and um, stone cladding. Next page, please. And these are just the side elevations to show that the uh, front and rear porches are uh, low sloped uh, single story elements. Uh, with that, uh, we conclude our presentation and open to questions or comments. Thank you. Thank you. If anyone wishes to speak to this application, please call 905-815-6095. I know Mr. Dickey has been able to join us. Good to see you, Mr. Dickey. Committee members, any questions for the applicant? I see none. Madam Secretary Treasurer, is anybody wishing to speak to this application? I see no one at this time. Okay, then we'll close discussion and I'll look for a motion. Ms. Yu. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman. Uh, based on my review of the application materials, including the staff report, having uh, the presentation up by the agent, uh, as well as the site visit, I'm um, I believe the proposal meets the four tests on the planning act. As such, I'd like to put uh, more, <laughs> uh, excuse me, bring, uh, bring the motion forward with the approval of this proposal subject to conditions. The dwelling would be constructed in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings dated October 25th. 2023, the approval expires two years from the date of decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Thank you. <laughs> Any comments on the motion? I see none. All those in favor of the motion to approve? That is unanimous. Your application has been approved. Uh, I, I just, sorry, I just want... I just wanted to note that Mr. Dickey didn't appear at the beginning of the hearing, so um, we're going to, he'll be able to vote on the next application because he wasn't present for the entire, um, he's unable to vote on, on this, on this motion for this one. So I do have all the other three. That's fine. And now Mr. Dickey moving forward, um, we have you in the meeting and, um, way to go. <laughs> Glad to see you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, we'll let you vote twice on the next one. <laughs> Thank you very much, committee members, Madam Chair. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Moving to CAVA 168 at 523 Esplanade. Anyone wishing to speak to this application, you can call in at 905-815-6095. Okay, I'm moving R10 Mataj into the meeting. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I am, uh, uh, my name is R10. I represent uh, Madaya Architects here in Oakville. Uh, I do represent uh, um, 523 Esplanade Ownership Gym and uh, Sissy on a singular uh, the variance, which is uh, uh, GFA. Currently, we are seeking a 51.9 square meter um, variance, uh, which is the only one that we currently have uh, brought forward. If you could please go to the next page, uh, one more. Um, as you can see, the, the house, uh, which is noted with the uh, the red tag there is the last one on Howard Street or Avenue, which means that there is one uh, less neighbor on the southern side for obvious reasons. Hence, the impact uh, does decrease. Uh, please, the next slide. 
on this one, we're trying to demonstrate or show the, the, the minimal impact that the, the addition does have. Um, it is only um, proposed on the northern side, this being the project north. As you can see on the south, east, and west, um, for the most part, there is no uh, proposal uh, on any alteration. Um, the increase, uh, if we could please go to the next slide, the increase on the, on the northern side is minimal, as I noted, uh, from the current uh, uh, portion of the building in, it, uh, in that niche there. We only extended about three feet. We are still about uh, 1.5 meter away from the, the existing uh, uh, garage. That means that even on that direction, uh, orientation to the north, we are having a minimal impact. Um, all the setbacks are kept. Um, all uh, the building height is kept. The only variance, as you noted earlier, uh, is the, the gross floor area. The addition on the ground floor is noted uh, lower right corner in yellow. For the ground floor, the, the green portion is existing that is being converted. Uh, next, please. On the southern side, you know, this is the other portion of the addition. As you can see at the top right corner of the building, that enclosure is almost uh, entirely there. We are simply putting a, a window to that opening, uh, which is the current balcony. So in my view, this one has uh, zero impact to, to the southern uh, uh, orientation. Uh, next, please. And if you could please go to page 18. So as you can see on this one, just like we, we noted earlier, uh, the gray part demonstrate or, uh, or highlights the existing building that is there to remain. The yellow one is the, the extent of the, the ground floor addition. And then in green with the, the diagonal hatches, the existing portion of the ground floor that is being renovated. I'm uh, trying to emphasize once again the, the minimal uh, addition that this uh, uh, proposal is, uh, is bringing forward. Uh, next, please. And uh, this is the last slide I had chosen. It is the second floor in uh, green. We, again, once again, we do show the existing uh, has to remain the yellow in the, uh, demonstrate or shows the ex, uh, the addition on the second floor. In case anyone asks, uh, what's the intent? Uh, they are having a laundry in the second floor because the current one is in the basement. And uh, for that uh, footprint that they have allowed in the ground floor, um, it is being uh, used as a, an additional bathroom for or the bathroom for the bedroom in the lower right corner. The other pages do uh, uh, show the floor plans and elevations. I don't think it's worth going through them. I'll be happy to respond to any question or if we needed to go and explore them. Um, I'm happy to also notice that uh, uh, all departments have given a thumbs up for the proposal and I wish the same from the committee. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Mataj. Committee members, any questions for the applicant? I see none. Madam Secretary Treasurer, we had a request to attend from a Sherry Florin. Um, if they would like to attend the meeting, they, they're required to raise their hand so I can move them into the meeting. Anybody that wishes to speak that hasn't called in, please call 905-815-6095. Perhaps she had second thoughts about calling in. No, she's just raised her hand, so I'm just it'll just take me a moment to move her into the meeting.
Okay, I've moved Sherry Florin into the meeting. Oh, sorry, no, no, sorry, she declined to come into the meeting. Okay, she should be arriving <laughs> as a panelist. <laughs> I see her now. Good evening, Ms. Florin. And unmute yourself. There we are. There we are. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. We get your name and address, please. Yes, my name is Sherry Florin, and my address is 11 Howard Avenue in Oakville. How can we assist tonight? Um, I was just enjoying just joining the meeting to get an understanding of the project and the extent of it and to see um, what it was going to be about. It was more fact finding mission than anything else. So no concerns you want to raise at this time? None whatsoever, sir. Okay. Well, thank you for your participation. Thank you. Madam Secretary Treasurer, has anyone else called in? I see no one at this time. And we'll close the discussion and I'll look for a motion on this matter. Mr. Dickey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Based on my review of the owner's application, the site plan for building elevations, you have my site visit. It's my opinion that the variance is minor in nature. And conforms to the four tests of the Planning Act, and I, and would have no negative impact on the neighbors. I put forth a motion that the application is applied for, be approved, subject to the uh, conditions that the additions be built in accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings, and that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision. The building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Unfortunately, I don't have the date of the uh, site plan and building elevations. If that needs to be inserted, somebody can help me there. But there's my motion. Thank you. I can insert those for you, General Cardins, with the site plan dated November 13th, 2023, and elevation drawings dated November 2nd, 2023. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Dickey. Any discussion on that motion? I see none. All those in favor of the motion to approve? That is unanimous. Your application has been approved, sir. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Too. For anybody just joining, CAVA 169 at 59 Sewell Drive was deferred earlier in the evening, so that application will not be heard tonight. And the next application is CAVA 170 at 107 Mayfield Drive. Anyone wishing to speak to this application, please call 905-815-6095. If you're the applicant or agent, if you can raise your hand so the secretary treasurer can move you in. Okay, I'm trying to move um, them in. They oh, are they there? Because they kept declining. Gerardo Castillo, I'm trying to move them into the meeting. Okay, uh, Gerardo Castillo uh, should be entering the meeting. Yep. Good evening, sir. Get your name and address, evening. please. Yes, my name is uh, Gerardo Castillo from Houston Home Designs at uh, 251 uh, North Service Road West, Suite 303 in Oakville. And I'm here representing, representing uh, Mr. and Mrs. Lee uh, at uh, 107 Mayfield for one uh, minor variance um, for, um, uh, sorry, for a GFA. 
I sent uh, earlier a small presentation. I'm not sure if we were able to upload it. Um, if not, we can work with, with uh, what was submitted. So there's a uh, site plan is up on the screen now. Yeah, no, I sent, um, I guess, a, a, a PDF with a few pictures of uh, new homes that are being uh, built in the area. Uh, most of them really, really similar in terms of uh, mass shape, even style uh, of these sorry. Uh, new proposed homes. Sorry, can I ask when you sent it? Because I did not receive it. Well, I sent it today. Um, I sent email that it was a bit, maybe too late to. No, no, no. no. I, I would take it right up until 4 30. So. I, I didn't, yeah, I didn't uh, receive it, it. Way before that, yeah. No, I do apologize. It, I, it never got through. Maybe it was too big and you got a bounce back, but I did not receive it. Uh, but that we, we, we can put your time. drawings yeah. that we have that are on the website, so we'll yeah, be able yeah. to see your site plan and elevations. Hmm, that's fine. Yeah, I just wanted to show you what, what was on, on the street. Uh, in this is, Again, it's a new um, two-story home. Um, in this area, I wanted to show how it's... it's uh, area that's been developing in the last few years. A lot of uh, teardowns and, and new builds. Again, really similar in terms of uh, the, the the volume, the size, and the cell. Uh, a lot of them, you know, probably they got uh, larger uh, variances that, that what we proposed were requesting. In this case, we're asking only for uh, one variance for, um, for uh, EFA. We're uh, asking just for an extra 12.3 meters. Uh, which is just an extra 1.68%. So from 41% to 42.68, for a total of 313.17 uh, meters. Um, if you can maybe scroll down, I guess, uh, from, from what we were submitted, you can see uh, in this case, for example, the size of, of our lot, um, and uh, like the size of, on the lot on the, on the left. Uh, right now in there, you can see probably the old house, with the house next to it, it's a, it's a brand new house, um, pretty same uh, sort of style, and uh, it looks even bigger than ours. So you can see that uh, ours, in terms of, with the mass of our house, it's pretty. Uh, it stays with, within the with, within the street scale. Um, if you can scroll down, you can actually see the this this is a, the proposal of the house. Uh, we try to play with some you know roofs and dormers um, to, to kind of reduce the, the, the mass of, of the, the building itself. Um, so this give you a, a, a good idea. If you've been, which I assume probably down in, in the area in the street, you'll see that um, a good, maybe 25% of a lot of the homes in the adjacent uh, streets, uh, they're being under uh, construction right now, and they're doing a, a lot of these sort of uh, new dwellings. So therefore, uh, for for this family of five, uh, I think you know just asking for an extra you know 132 square feet uh, over the the what's approved, we we find it that that's minor. Um, we did comply with lot coverage uh, height setbacks. Uh, we we tried to say as much as we could within the within the, within the bylaw. Um, so we're just requesting these single uh, barns. Uh, so we we find it it's it's. Uh, it, it won't affect the, the street and, and the look of the street. If you have any, any questions, we will please to answer. Okay, thank you, Mr. Castillo. Uh, although we didn't get to see your photographs, the committee members all do a site visit, so everyone will be quite familiar with what is happening on the street. Um, if anyone wishes to speak to this application, you can call now, 905-815-6095. Committee members, do you have any questions for the applicant? I see none. Madam Secretary-Treasurer, has anybody called in? Um, the homeowner has to be moved into the meeting. I don't know whether they want to speak or not. Mr. Lee, I see on the screen. Did Correct. you wish to speak? It's a moment. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Actually, just I want to participate in this meeting because as a new 
immigrant, I don't know the exact procedure. So I just wanted to watch this procedure. Yeah, and also basically I uh, made the initial design by myself before uh, refined by uh, Keystone. Uh, so I just wanted to participate. I, I didn't know exact procedure, so I just clicked participate in. So that's why my pop up there, but I don't have much talking about this. Sorry for that. Oh, that's fine. And your agent uh, has represented you well in this presentation. With that, um, Madam Chair, if nobody has called in, no, we will no. close the discussion and I'll look for a motion on this matter. Mr. Hardcastle. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to take my site visit. Having reviewed the materials, including the written staff report, and having already heard Mr. Castillo's presentation, I'm satisfied that the requested variance conforms to the four tests of the Act. Um, as was indicated in the presentation, this is a design that is consistent with the character, of the, the evolving character of the area. Um, so I'll put forward this motion subject to two conditions, those being that the dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the submitted site plan dated November 5th, 2023, and the elevations dated November 2nd, 2023, and that the approval will expire within two years of the date of the decision if the permit has not been issued. Thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Any discussion on this motion? I see none. All those in favor of the motion to approve? That is unanimous. Your application has been approved. Chair sure. and members of the committee, have a happy holidays. Thank Indeed. you very much. You're welcome. Next item is CAV A171 at 235 Tilford Road. Showing a Joe Dom as the agent. Anyone wishing to speak to this application, if you can call in now, 905-815-6095. Okay, I've moved Joe Dom into the meeting. Good evening, sir. Okay. Yes, my name is Joe Dome, 133 Torresdale Avenue, agent for the owner. Um, this is a uh, fairly straightforward application. Uh, the owner would like to construct a new dwelling on a corner lot to accommodate family needs. Um, there are only four variances requested. Um, variances number two and four refer to the proposed front yard of 9.78 meters, um, an interior side yard setback of uh, 2.88 meters. Uh, due to the property being a corner lot, the um, technical front yard as per zoning is on the north side along West Lynn Road. Uh, the front setback variance only applies to a north, the, uh, the northeast corner of the covered patio. Uh, the angle of the north lot line uh, widens this setback considerably to the west as well, and the majority of the front setback more than meets the bylaw. The proposed interior side yard of 2.88 meters is mitigated by the fact that the setback widens to over uh, three meters toward the north, and there is adequate space between the proposed dwelling and the neighboring dwelling. Uh, variance number three refers to the proposed dwelling length. Um, the variance is mitigated by the fact that the design itself is quite modest compared to nearby dwellings, um, which were approved for um, larger massings. Uh, the length um, is measured including the covered porch. So um, the main floor of the dwelling itself is 20.76 uh, meters, while the second floor is significantly stepped back in length on the south side um, over the garage and is under the bylaw at 14.23 meters in length. And furthermore, there are uh, no lot coverage uh, floor area or height variances uh, requested. As uh, mentioned in the planning staff report, there's also a considerable number of trees and shrubs along the Westland Road frontage, which provides considerable screening and privacy. Uh, variance number one pertains to the garage floor area of uh, 62.11 square meters. And this is consistent with uh, garages on the street, such as uh, directly across the street at 232 Tilford Road. Uh, which was approved for a slightly larger uh, garage floor area of uh, 62.28 square meters 
and uh, and this dwelling was uh, was also approved for a 31.9% uh, RFA and a 9.92 uh, meter height. So we really feel that uh, this proposal is, is really quite modest and uh, planning staff have no concerns and there are no uh, neighbors in opposition. And uh, we feel that this application is uh, quite reasonable and minor in nature. And I'd be happy to answer any uh, further questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Committee members, do you have any questions for the applicant? Mr. Dickey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I I'm concerned about the setback across the rear of the house. I, I you refer that to very uh, as variance number two, the 2.88 meters. Uh, basically, why can't you move the house further toward Tilford and give the uh, meet the zoning bylaw along that side of the property? Um, I think it was just in order to um, uh, maintain just a larger setback uh, from the streetscape um, so that it uh, um, it would uh, meet the bylaw there and then just um, be able to uh, uh, mitigate um, uh, any concerns with the uh, um, with the length or, or anything like that. So um, um, we feel that uh, there's no... Um, uh, opposition from the neighbors, so uh, we do feel that it is uh, reasonable in this case. Um, and, and the fact that the the uh, second floor is also um, stepped back, so the the um, the uh, actual massing of the the dwelling would be uh, uh, mitigated there too. Second floor is stepped back. Is it stepped back the four point two meters? Uh, no, so that that would be stepped back uh, in the for the dwelling length. Say that again. Uh, so that would be stepped back for the dwelling length, as opposed to the um, the interior side yard. Okay, you confused me. So, let me well, just the back the house. Back in here. Sorry, Mr. Dickey. Um, Mr. Dom, if we put your presentation back up, do you have site plans and elevations that would probably assist with this discussion? Yes. As far as we can get the presentation back, there we go. You can direct to which page, which will help you explain to Mr. Dickey. Um, yes. Um, do you see where um, it shows the second floor outline, um, the label over there? Um, so when I'm referring to the step back, so that would be the step back in the, the building length. Um, so while it's well, it's not stepped back for the interior side. We feel that the actual portion of the dwelling that um, the, the, that actually uh, like the two point eight eight meters is the main floor um, um, at the southeast corner, um, but it does widen a, a bit to um, over three meters as it goes to the north. And the the actual um, second story of the dwelling is also stepped back. So we feel that the actual um, uh, portion of the dwelling for which um, uh, that is on that uh, interior side, um, that impact is mitigated. Back to my original question, is the second story set back 4.2 meters from along that, that side of the property? Uh, no, no, not on, on that side of the, the property. Um, uh, no, so the uh, two point eight eight meters is the is the variance for uh, the second floor as well. Uh, oh, we just oh. feel like with the other uh, massing considerations, we, we feel that that is um, um, is addressed. Say that again. What's addressed? We're still. I'm just talking about the back of the house. I, I'm not asking you about whether setbacks stepbacks are on any part of the house. So you're confusing me. On the back of the house. There is no step back for the second floor. Is that correct? Um, that's right. So the, if, yeah, that's right. Now, the, the step you back say history. something about mitigation measures along that back side property line that will mitigate against that height and that closeness? Well, there um, is no um, height variance that's being requested. Um, and, you know, compared to other, um, properties nearby. Um, so yeah, the, thank the you. No, no, I'm talking about. I'm setback, setback. I'm not asking about height. All I'm asking, I was asking you, 
whether the second story was stepped back and you you seem to no so the second story is say it was it is it now so i'm saying was there any other mitigation any other measures taken to mitigate against the fact that that that, that um, side yard is so narrow um so the the factors that i would point to are the fact that there's no uh, height variance being requested and the second floor length. So that's what I was referring to in that context. But the, there, even though there isn't a step back, we feel that those other factors um, really help to, uh, uh, to mitigate the impact. Mr. Dom, is there an elevation in this package you could turn to? Yes. So that's the front, we need the rear elevation. So your second floor is not the full length of the house. I think that's probably where you were referring to the step back. That's correct. But the, the second floor is the same wall as the first floor, but it doesn't extend the full length of the house. That's correct. And, and combined with the fact that there's, um, there's no height variance being requested as well. Does that assist Mr. Dickey? Um, yes, okay, that answers my question. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions for the applicant? And I see none. Madam Secretary Treasurer, has anybody called in to speak to this application? There's no one at this time. Thank you. I'll close discussion and I will look for a motion. Is you. Thank you, Chairman. I try not to cough this time. <laughs> Based on my review of the application materials, as uh, including the staff reports, having heard the presentation done by the agent, and 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 uh, have having undertaken my site visit, uh, my understanding is that this proposal meets the four tests under Planning Act. Therefore, I'd like to put. A motion forward to approve the proposal subject to can two conditions: the detached dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the submitted site plan dated October twenty third, twenty twenty three, and the elevation drawings dated October fourth, twenty twenty three. The approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. And. Well done without coughing. Any discussion on the motion? I see none. All those in favor of the motion to approve? And that is unanimous. Your application has been approved, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good evening. You as well. Next application, CAVA 172 at 2295 Briar Grove Circle. And I would note we have a request to attend and one letter of opposition. Anyone wishing to speak to this application, if you can call in at 905 815 6095. Yeah, we have the agent, Mr. Falzon with us. Yes, uh, through you, Chair. Good evening. My name is Daniel Falzon. I am here on behalf of the owners of 2295 Briar Grove Circle. We are seeking relief from one bylaw pertaining to a proposed landscaping project, uh, which includes the construction of a rear yard uh, covered deck. We're seeking relief uh, for the rear yard offset uh, to the covered deck. Uh, I just want to make it clear that the variance would not be required if the deck was not covered. Uh, 2295 Briar Grove Circle is an interior lot uh, with a fairly, sh fairly shallow rear yard. Uh, the proposed covered deck and uh, hardscaping has been situated such that drainage is not adversely affected. Uh, we work with staff uh, 
to uh, uh, through the variance application process and did not see any new staff objections to our application. I'd be happy to answer any questions that uh, you may have regarding our file. Thank you, Chair. Uh, does your presentation have a site plan of the proposal or elevations that would assist? We, I did not submit a presentation, but there should be uh, elevation views and a site plan. Here's the site plan. So you could see, no, this is the cabana structure. So this is not it. Uh, you can see here the, the proposed covered deck is, is touching the house at the uh, the left side of the page. And the variance of keep going related to that, but not to the cabanas, correct? That's right. That's right. Uh, we're being affected because uh, I believe uh, since it's attached to the house, this is being seen as more of an extension to the house as opposed to just a covered uh, independent accessory structure. Correct. It's attached and it's covered. So it goes setback applies. That's right. I also want to make it clear that uh, we're not proposing uh, it to be enclosed or an all seasons room or anything like that. It's, it's just open with a, uh, with, with a room, uh, like a loggia pretty much. Okay, thank you. Committee members, do you have any questions for the applicant? Any member of the public would like to speak to this application, please call in at 905-815-6095. Note we have one email of opposition from Yusuf Syed. Madam Secretary Treasurer, do we have anyone wishing to speak? Um, if they wish to speak, they would have to raise their hand so that I can move them into the meeting. Now, I did read that letter. Um, I couldn't tell if it was opposition or in support. Uh, the first half of it sounded like they were fine with the proposal, except they wanted clarification on the, the uh, basically we're, we were requesting a 0 0.88 meter, uh, basically in addition to what's requ what it's required. He wanted us to just show it on the drawings, um, but there's no formal process for that. that was illustrated in the site plan you showed us earlier, correct? Right, we do show the offset. He just wanted to see the exact point, how far it could have went, uh, like without a bylaw, or without a variance, sorry, within the bylaw. Uh, but it didn't seem like it was a letter of objection to me. Thank you. Madam Secretary Treasurer, has anyone called in to speak? Uh, no, and I don't see anybody raising their hand at this time. We had an Ali Kanamadi that had requested to attend, but um, perhaps they're satisfied with the presentation. If nobody has called in, we'll close the discussion and I'll look to the committee for a motion on this matter. Mr. Dickey. Based on my review of the owner's application, the site plans, the building elevations, my site visit, and the uh, agent presentation, together with the planning staff's report, it is my opinion that the variance is minor in nature and conforms to the test under the Planning Act. Therefore, I put forth a motion that the application as applied for be approved subject to the condition that the cleared addition deck um, be built in accordance with the committed uh, plan dated in June of 2023 and that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision. The building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Thank you, Mr. Dickey. Any discussion on this motion? Um, I just want to read it as it is, it, it, because it's called a covered porch in the condition as opposed to a deck. So I just have to okay. have the decision read the covered porch 
be constructed in general accordance with site site plan elevation stated June 23. Is that okay I, if I change the yes, word to, to covered porch? Thank you. I question in favor of the motion to approve. Is you? Thank you. That is unanimous. Your application is approved. Thank you, Chair. Good evening. Good evening. Next application, CAV A173 at 86 Wilson Street. Anybody wishing to speak to this application? If you could please call in now at 905-815-6095. Here's the applicant, if you can raise your hand and I... Yeah, I've moved the agent into the meeting. Good evening. Can you get your name and address, please, for the record? Hello, good evening. Uh, it's Hamia Gari Mebadi. Uh, my address is 108 Mimico Avenue, Etobicoke, Toronto. I'm the architect and uh, representing uh, dentistry, uh, the owner of the property 86 Wilson Street. Um, shall I start the presentation? Yes, please. Perfect. Um, so our uh, proposal is the uh, new third edition, uh, third story addition to the existing two story commercial uh, with elevator on the back side uh, for the accessibility. Uh, we are um, altering the layout of the uh, parking area to accommodate the accessible parking at the same time, uh, trying to uh, protect the uh, tree protection zone as well. As well. Uh, if you can go to the second page. Thank you. So uh, we have started the pack meeting last year and for a year we were uh, in a back and forth with uh, different agencies in the, uh, in the town. Uh, we tried to uh, meet all the requirements. Um, at the end, we came up with the uh, final parking layout that you're seeing. Um, the reasoning for not meeting the uh, number of the parking we need is firstly, the all the trees on the south side, uh, we didn't want to injure any of those. So after a uh, few back and forth with uh, planners and uh, traffic uh, engineers and the uh, uh, forestry division, we came up with uh, this option that everyone agreed is the best one at the same time because of the radius of that we needed for, um, they call it the um, big van, I think, for uh, for handicaps to be able to turn. We had to give a lot of space for that. So, um, and at the same time, uh, the existing driveway uh, on the west side of the building, uh, pro, uh, as you can see, have the it doesn't meet the minimum width for the driveway that we need to have, but that's the existing situation that we are not changing. I should say that we are not even changing any part of the backyard except the uh, attached part that we are adding the elevator to, and even uh, surface is going to stay as is. We are going to just uh, reorganize the parking uh, space as to paint it and show how to park. If we can go to the second page, please. Uh, third page, sorry. Um, here we show um, the other two variances. We have one for the width that I just uh, spoke about. And then uh, the one uh, that we are uh, not seeing is the distance between accessible parking to any uh, portion of the building, which is the elevator. We could not push more because then we would uh, uh, technically get into the protection zone of the tree. Um, we, we talked with uh, planners and with uh, traffic engineers and they were both okay with the dimensions we had. Uh, next page, please. And uh, the other two variances we have is the minimum uh, front setback and the maximum. The reasoning for maximum is mostly we were trying to minimize the impact of the third story 
uh, which planners were in favor of, and uh, they, they agreed that we should keep the building as is. To avoid this, we had to move to uh, almost half, uh, half of uh, what you see in between those two red lines that um, we, we, we both try to avoid. Uh, we wanted to have the, uh, the porch and like balcony on the uh, street side, mostly to, to give that buffer between what we are adding and the street at the same time, try to minimize the impact. Uh, for the minimum uh, front setback uh, for the guardrail, we are uh, following the existing main walls that we have. Uh, for that reason, we just have to uh, uh, get that uh, relief to be able to put the guards uh, for whoever is using that uh, balcony, rooftop balcony area. Uh, that was it. Uh, if there's any question, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you. Many members, any questions for the app for Hardcastle? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this may, in fact, be a question for staff. I, I'm, I'm looking at, at the language of variances six and seven, and in, in particular seven, uh, where the requirement of the bylaw is a minimum front yards uh, shall be 2.0 meters, whereas the variance being requested is to permit a maximum front yard of 1.11 meters. And whereas in this uh, variance number six, we're speaking of maximum front yard. Can, can you provide some clarity for me on, on that? Yes, uh, through the chair um, to the committee member, the um, I did note that there was a, a discrepancy there that the um, the second the number seven that the minimum front yard would be uh, one point one one meters. That is correct. So your assessment was correct. So that should read uh, to permit a minimum front yard of one point one one meters. Um, thank you. Um... Would this pose a challenge for us in terms of appropriate notification? Uh, through the chair, I'll defer to Committee of Adjustment Secretary Treasurer. Well, it's my, under it's my understanding there can't be any changes to the request. This is the first time I'm hearing that there is a change to the request. So, so I think that... Um, that perhaps notification needs to be given again um, through the chair. I just want to check and see is... It, it's not like it's a typo that he... They, they've put the wrong word, maximum as opposed to minimum. I would agree. I'm just wondering, is that what's in the application as well or just in the staff report? You mean the notice? Yes. Okay. I believe the notice is just, you know, copied from each. Yeah, I don't have access to the notice. Yeah, the, the notice says to prove it a maximum. Through the chair um, to committee, I think that um, I think it's understood that um, that we are speaking of a minimum in that number seven, not a maximum. Uh, but it's um, uh, I'm not a lawyer, so I I couldn't advise you whether or not um, whether or not the public notice requirement was met. Yes, and none of us are. Mr. Hardcastle, in your assessment, um, does it is it misleading? Does it do the same thing if uh, it's an error in what is being permitted? M Mr. Chairman, my my concern is that 
they've, they've sought to deviate the requirements of a specific section of the zoning bylaw to permit something that would be in conflict with another section of the bylaw. Again, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I do have some experience in reviewing zoning bylaws. I, I believe that this could be a challenge going down the road, a problem down the road. I think, um, you know, from a, from an administrative perspective, but I think from a notification perspective, we tend to have some flexibility in terms of uh, where um, there needs to be an adjustment to reduce a variance uh, on the floor. Um, but this is, I don't believe that would necessarily fall in under my understanding of that, that, that accommodation. So uh, as much as it would pain me to suggest this, but I, I think this may be a matter that would need to be deferred to uh, accommodate uh, uh, appropriate public notification on variance number seven. And Mr. Hardcastle, I tend to agree with you if we're dealing with a lessening of a variance, this committee has um, rightfully dealt with those, but as you point out, this is kind of mixing two different sections, um, unfortunately. I'll, uh, I'll give uh, the applicant a uh, chance to speak to it, but um, unfortunately there seems to be a deficiency in how the uh, variance was asked for, and uh, you've heard Mr. Hardcastle believing that uh, this matter needs to be deferred, but I will give you an opportunity to speak to this matter. Um, so, I have, I, okay, I, I think I understand, I don't understand the, the problem, but um, I was just checking the appendix we, uh, we submitted, and in our appendix is just saying, minimum required from setback and for the other one is maximum so technically both uh, bylaws that we are asking relief for minimum and maximum both of them are there and um, it's it's very hard to think like we can't ask for maximum and maximum right we can ask for a maximum of 1.5 meter and then ask for a maximum of six, six meters as like even in our appendix, I, I understand that in, in the uh, public notice, there was a mistake with that. But even in that, from my understanding, when I'm, uh, I haven't noticed because in our submission, we submitted it right in a, in a right way. But uh, I, I, I'm just thinking that it, no one can read it as maximum and then we are applying another maximum of setback in one application. It just, just doesn't make sense to me. You know what I'm saying? I, I understand, but there are two different standards in this zone under two different sections that deal with both a minimum and a maximum. And the, the problem is, Mr. Hardcastle is pointing out that it's a, the public notice that went out um, has got an error in it that uh, variant seven, the minimum front yard shall be two, and you're requesting the maximum front yard shall be 1.1. 1 .1. Um, It's, it's more of a legality than uh, a, it's, it's not a whether the committee feels it appropriate or not. I don't think I've heard any concern from the committee members about your application, but it's the legality of the notice that's being brought into question. And uh, it's sounding like, unfortunately, this matter is going to need to be deferred and a new notice provided. And I think that's the advice of staff as well. The chair to um, to the committee. Um, I, I wonder if this is a circumstance where the deferral fee may be waived um, from the applicant um, because it was due to staff error uh, is my suspicion. So um, that that may be considered. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Um, and I just want to add um, our next, the next meeting we have is January 24th. We don't have any meetings from today until that. So we can absolutely put them on our, for our next meeting, which is Jan 24th. Thank you. Um, un unfortunately, Sarah, I think we're gonna have to defer this application. Um, 
totally understand. Um, it's an unfortunate. It's yeah, it's it's very unfortunate because I don't think the committee has an issue with your application itself, but um, it's a technical issue that happened. Um, Mr. Hardcastle, since you raised the issue, I'm going to come back to you um, and ask whether you want to move a motion to uh, defer the application for a defect in notice and whether, as has been suggested by staff, whether um, you would at that with this uh, circumstance entertain waiving the fee as well. Mr. Chairman, um, uh, thank you for coming back to me. And uh, yes, I would agree with the position of staff if we are talking about a situation and it, and, and it seems apparent based upon the comments from the applicant that that this could in fact have been an error versus uh, a, uh, an um, incorrect request. Uh, I would put forward a motion for deferral uh, and uh, to waive the deferral fee. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Is there any discussion on the motion to defer? Mr. Dickey? I just wanted, uh, I, I'm okay for the motion to defer and the motion to waive the fees. Uh, Mr. Chair, you had mentioned that we, there had been no other discussion. I have an issue as to the number of parking spaces. I just wanted to say that as it stands right now, I didn't want the uh, applicant to come back in whatever amount of time and say there was no other discussion on no other issues. That's everything else I'm fine with, just, just giving a, shall we say, a heads up on, hopefully I'll resolve that issue in the month. <laughs> but uh, th Thank you, I, Mr. Dickey. I probably shouldn't have said that there hasn't been any other opposition because we never got to the full discussion. So I appreciate that. Um, but with the motion to defer on the floor, we can't have any further discussion, but I appreciate that heads up. So, the motion is to defer the application um, for an error in, or deficient notice and uh, to waive the deferral fee. All those in favor? Okay, that is unanimous. Uh, the application, unfortunately, sir, has been deferred, but you won't be required to pay the deferral fee, and we will see you back in January. Thank you. Have a nice holidays. Thank you. Similar to earlier, if anybody was waiting for CAV A174 at 84 Ridge Drive, that application was deferred earlier. It will not be heard tonight. It will move to our final application of the evening and of the year. CAV A155 at 167 Balsam Drive. This was deferred at the request of the applicant from November 1st. And at which time I believe we had some letters of objection. We are now showing three emails of support from Andrew and Hallie McDonald, Rory Mellon Sillis, and Sherry Sutherland. And it looks like we have Mr. Mann. Good evening, As Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Richard Mann. I'm at 153 Woodhaven Park Drive in Oakville. <clears throat> I'm the architect and agent for Andrew and Megan Backley, owners of 167 Balsam Drive. <clears throat> Excuse me. As you know, this uh, is a continuation of a, a variance from November 1st. Uh, there was some um, noted opposition from some of the neighborhoods, specifically to dwelling debt. That particular application was requesting four variances. Uh, this application is still requesting four variances. Three of them have been um, produced. <clears throat> Next um, slide, please. I'll go through the variances as we go through them. The first variance is for uh, driveway width. Balsam Drive uh, on this in the southerly portion here is actually a fairly narrow street. Um, it's bordered by a built-up sidewalk on the west side and ditches on the east side. In the mornings and in the evenings, because of its proximity to a new central public school, it's essentially a one lane road. Um, the request for the uh, additional driveway width is so that we can exit the uh, property in a forward manner. As you can see by the two photos on the right, the uh, view is somewhat obstructed by uh, 
vegetation. And in order to clear that, you need to stick the rear end of your car right into the middle of the road or into the at least the middle of the one accessible lane. Um, next slide. Uh, so this is a slide showing uh, Balsam Drive. Uh, all the red dots indicate driveways that have turnaround capabilities, either through circular driveways or through hammerheads. So all of those properties are able to exit in a forward manner, uh, which is what we're requesting. The uh, hammerhead uh, driveway component that we're um, proposing is 14.95 meters. This is a reduction from 16.5 in the first application. We reduced the, um, we eliminated a turnaround in the center of it. Uh, the existing driveway has a, it's not really a hammerhead, but it has a widened section that's 13.36 meters. So we're, in, we're asking for an increase of 1.57 meters in the width. The intent in the zoning bylaws to minimize the amount of paved surface in the front yard visible to the public realm, and this driveway will take up 34% of the yard. The remaining 66 will be landscape. The proposed driveway will create a safe and accessible access to uh, 167 Balsam Drive while also providing a front yard that maintains the intent of the zoning bylaw. Next slide, please. <clears throat> the next variance is for garage floor area. This is unchanged from the previous application. The floor area uh, requested is 80.75 meters squared. Uh, the intent in the zoning bylaw is to prevent the garage from being a visual, visually dominant feature. We've designed a two-car garage that gives you a typical two-car entrance to the public realm and is not a visually dominant feature to the dwelling. The, the rest of the uh, increased floor area is internal to the dwelling. Next slide, please. The next variance is for building height. The previous application um, was requesting a building height of 9.96 meters. Uh, the current application is requesting 9.75 meters. So we've been able to drop it 0.2 of a meter. Uh, the way we dropped it was a, um, you, can, you can see it by the dotted line in the, in the red hatched component. That is the line of this sort of the low sloped upper level roof beyond. In the previous one, that sloped from front to back, and we now have them sloping from side to side. So the ridge component is now in line with the uh, front and the rear of the house, as opposed to in the previous version, it sloped up and met at a ridge of 9.96 meters. Uh, the front elevation and the, um, the roof lines of this particular house all have uh, sloped hip style projections with decorative dormers. The sloped hip roofs don't project a vertical face to either the straight or to the street or the neighboring properties. And the roof lines slope away from the property lines. The portion of the roof that exceeds the uh, allowed building height is well set back from the building perimeter at 5.7 meters from the side lot lines. Next slide, please. So this is the uh, side lot view and it's typical, uh, it's typical on the other side. The intent of it is to show the, uh, the hatched portion at the top is the low slope component. The nine meters is a measurement to the hip ridge, which essentially is the effective height for most of the roof that will be visible to the north and the south side. In the previous version, the uh, ridge was more central to the uh, property, sloped front to back, and was at 9.96 meters. So it's an effective reduction of almost three feet. Uh, next, prop next slide, please. And in terms of height, the overall design, the front elevation, it's broken up in three horizontal vol three main volumes with sloped hip roof lines. The entry portico and the garage projections are uh, single story mathing elements that break up front elevation and reduce the vertical facade. Next slide, please. So this is a uh, map of the uh, neighborhood and the neighborhood's characterized by some of the largest lots in Oakville. The map shows that it's not unusual for the redevelopment of some of these lots to have variances for height due to the allowable size of the houses being built. Many of them have variances in excess of 10 meters, and this speaks to the character of the neighborhood. Our design mitigates the additional height request by using sloped roof lines and not creating undue vertical facades on the public realm or the neighboring properties. It's our position that this design meets the intent of the official plan and the zoning bylaw and meets the four tests of the Planning Act. 
Next slide, please. <clears throat> the last variance is the dwelling depth. And this was the most contentious one from the previous uh, application and the reason, the main reason for the deferral. The previously deferred application requested 41.12 meters and the revised application is requesting 26.97. And this is a, uh, an amendment by way of eliminating the attached pool house and reconfiguring the rear, cover, the rear covered porch. So you can see from, from that, um, the site plan there, that the, the main house is 19.07 meters, the two-story component, 19.07 meters deep. On the south side, there's a 5.06 meter deep great room, single story, a story and a half great room. There's a 5.48 meter porch on the north side. It has an additional three meter projection that is allowable because it's nine meters from the north lot line. And then on the front of the house, when you add all these components together, the front of the house has a, a 2.43 meter single story covered porch and a 1.5 meter single story garage projection. Next slide, please. So the main impacts on dwelling depth will be on the north and south properties. And so you can see from this uh, side elevation that again, we have the 19.07 uh, two story component. On the right-hand side, you see the 1.5 meter single story garage projection. And then at the rear, the 5.48 meter single story covered porch projection. So the total dwelling depth of those elements together is 26.04 meters. Uh, but the actual, I'd like to you know, sort of reiterate again, the two story element is 19.07 meters. And then on the next slide, please, that was the north side. And this is the south side. So the south side has a more, more of a continuous face um, and it's 24.13 meters, which is again, the two story component of 19.07 and then the 5.06 meters actually uh, for the, um, the great room beside. Next slide, please. So with the removal of the attached pool house from the previous application, the current application has a rear yard amenity setback of 40.5 meters where 10.5 meters is the minimum required. I won't read the official plan uh, um, policies there on time, um, but the proposed dwelling at Balsam Drive uses architectural features and materials that break up the exterior volumes and massing while maintaining a scale and character that's compatible with the surrounding neighborhood. The variances requested are compatible with the surrounding neighborhood and the large size of the lot allows for the design of a house of the size while not impacting the public realm or the neighboring properties negatively. Um, we did have four letters of opposition from the previous application. Um, we don't have any uh, listed on um, in the comments at this time. There may be people there to speak to it, but the intent was that, you know, we did a deal with, uh, with the dwelling depth and we attempted to deal with the height and then we also made some revisions to the um, to the driveway width. So we believe the proposed dwelling at uh, 167 Balsam Drives maintains the general intent and purpose of the official plan. It maintains the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw. It is desirable for the appropriate development of the land and the variances requested are minor in nature. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Mann. If there is anybody wishing to speak to this application, please call in at 905-815-6095. Committee members, do you have any questions for the applicant? Mr. Dickey. Chair, this is just a clarification on the height. Yep. On the uh, front elevation, I can see where the, uh, you, you show the nine meters of height, and then you show 0 0.75 meters to the ridge of the roof. But then when you come across the, the two peaks uh, seem to be higher. Can you explain to me why they're not taken into consideration to make the house 10 points? Through you, through you, Mr. Chair, to Mr. Dickey. Um, if we can go to uh, staff, if we can go to the uh, front elevation, I think that's... Um, it's basically the in the wording of the um, 
Yeah, that, that one's good too. But if we can go to the front elevation. So yeah, so that one there, it's the decorative metal cap is similar to a cupola. So some, and if we go to the, um, the site, so you can see that it's a 0 0.75, 0 0.76 meter wide metal cap. And then if we go to the side elevation, it's like a little pyramid. And that sort of is a, is a decorative completion of those peaks, those hips. So if we, if we go down one more slide, you'll see it in side view sort of dotted in behind decorative oh, okay. cap beyond. So Thank it's you. a, you know, it's a small pyramidal sort of cap to the roof that falls under the, uh, the uh, definitions and um, the, the, the planner can, can confirm this if yes or no, but it, it falls under the definition of a decorative architectural feature like a, like a cupola. Great, thank you very much. I see it now, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dickey. Any other questions for the applicant? I see none. Madam Secretary Treasurer, has anyone called in to speak to this application? Um, there's, there's no one at this time. Okay, thank you. Before I turn it over for a motion, Mr. Mann, if uh, memory serves, um, when you were here bef with, before us, you had a positive staff report and negative uh, comments from the neighborhood, I would just like to commend you and your client for taking the initiative in that scenario to actually seek the deferral and to work with your neighbors. That's uh, very much appreciated. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, can I, would, could the chair please just read out the names of the, of the support letters? I did oh, earlier. Oh, did you? Sorry, I missed it. Maya, I apologize. Uh, would you like them again? Or? I would not. <laughs> okay, with that then, before I get asked to do anything else, I'm going to close the discussion and uh, look for a motion on this matter. Still looking for a motion. Mr. Hardcastle. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, Having undertaken my site visit, having reviewed the materials, having heard the presentation from the applicant, um, uh, which was extensive in going through the, the, the modifications and details, and, and being reminded by and highlighted by the chair the, the, the conversation and the engagements that have occurred between the, uh, the applicant, the owners, and the, uh, the neighborhood to address concerns that were, were raised before this committee previously. I'm satisfied with the requested variances. I will put forward a motion of approval. Um, that motion, bear with me for just a moment, would be subject to uh, two conditions, those being that the dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings dated November 11th, 2023, and that the approval will expire within two years of the date of the decision if a permit has uh, not been issued for the proposed construction. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Any discussion on that motion? All those in favor of the motion to approve? That is unanimous. Mr. Mann, your application has been approved. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Happy holidays. And to you. Okay, that concludes the agenda items. Um, Mr. Hardcastle, looks like you want to confirm the minutes on November 15th. I would, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And would you like to move to adjourn? I think I would as well. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. We are adjourned at 834.